Hello and welcome to my world of crochet. My name is Stine and this video is going to be a from start to finish video of me crocheting a children's cardigan called Lemon Blooms. So this cardigan is most definitely going to challenge me because I'm going to do stitches that I have never done before. And of course, I'm going to learn more about putting garments together and so on. So of course, I'm very keen on, on this learning experience and sharing it with you guys. So for this cardigan, I'm going to use the Yarn Art Jeans yarn. And this yarn is, is a very soft um, mixed yarn of 55% cotton and 45% acrylics. There is 50 grams in a bowl like this. And on these bowls, it comes with 160 meters, which equals about 174 yards. So this is a very fine yarn, or very fine is probably wrong, but it's, it's a fine yarn and it's a classified weight two. So I will be using a crochet hook of a three and a half millimeters for this. I think it's also called an e-hook um, in American terms. And um, I have four balls of this yarn. And these four balls is basically what sets the limitation, of course, of the size of cardigan that I'm going to be making. And um, the pattern that I found for this um, lemon broom cardigan um, calls for um, also a fine yarn. And the only difference is that um, the yarn, it requires, it comes like, it's it's a f also for the 50 gram skeins, they come with 170 meters, this is 160. So this is a slight bit thicker, but not very much. So they are very, very compatible. Um, and this is a quite like lightweight yarn feeling wise, and it's a soft feeling. So I decided that this is the yarn I want to use for it. Plus, I believe that this color is absolutely amazing. And it's a great option for me to try out this yarn art jeans for the first time for a piece of garment. Um, so looking at the size chart and how much yarn I need um, with four balls or four skeins, um, I should be able to make four year old sized or six year old sized cardigan. Um, I'm optioning for four years old because then I'm sure that I do have yarn enough because it is a tiny bit uh, different type of yarn that I'm gonna be using for this. Um, so also, obviously, I'm going to do stitches that I'm not, fel uh, that I'm not uh, familiar with. So it's going to be a learning progress for me and um, I have no clue yet how much I'm gonna curse away this project, um, but hopefully it's gonna be a great learning experience regardless for me. Um, I will be using chain stitches, single crochets, double crochets. For me, the new stitch will be the puff stitch. Uh, there will be slip stitches. I was being a standing double crochets. That's also new for me. And then it's the simple concept of uh, crocheting uh, either single or double crochets together to uh, decrease. Um, so that's about the stitches that I will have to be using uh, for the pattern. And of course, I have shared you a link to where you can find the pattern down below. Yes, so that's about it for now. And um, I will start to see where I will have to be starting to make a size of four years old, which should be possible with the four balls I have. So um, yeah, let's get going. I actually made a small mistake when I was saying that I was going to use a three and a half millimeter hook um, because the pattern actually calls for a four millimeter hook and the closest four millimeter hook I had um, when I started on making the chain was one of my prim hooks. So I will be using this prim four millimeter hook to of course follow the pattern best possible. So I started up by chaining the 60, which the recipe calls for, or the recipe, huh? the pattern, of course. So this is basically how the chain of 60 looks like. And um, and I have to say it's, 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 the four millimeter fits nicely um, with this type of yarn. Um, 
for for these chains. So I think that that was at least a good decision to increase the hook size just by one. Um, so basically, I'm going to proce proceed with the pattern. And um, again, this will be a learning adventure, a learning curve for me. So yeah, I'll take them one by one and hopefully I won't have to flop my work too many times while I try to figure this out. Um, I am most definitely going to do a bit of research and read the pattern through several times to make sure that I do it correctly the first time. But, you know, I will let you know as soon as we get there. The only thing I do know for sure is that um, this cardigan has a very nice texture definition, which is also super soft at the same time. So it is going to be both adding warmth, but also um, sort of happiness and style to, to, to the child's outfit, who's going to be the happy end receiver of this. So, yeah. Um, I'll come back with an update once I've made the few first rows to see if and how this is going to work out for me. So I've made the first seven rounds of the cardigan, which basically now looks like this. So here back, you have the back piece here where my hands are would be the shoulder piece and you have the front piece here. And it's really giving a really nice texture of this pattern. See if I can hold it up a bit closer. You have the puff stitches here at the edges of the shoulders and you can really, really feel the texture and it's it's working up really, really nicely with this um, Yana jeans yarn. I'm so far really, really pleased with the result. And another thing is that um, I haven't needed to flock this yet, which is absolutely surprising to me. And it's much easier to follow the pattern than I originally thought. Like, you know, I saw the picture of this pattern. I was like, okay, I can most definitely do this. Then I was reading the pattern. And I was like, oh my goodness, what on earth did I get myself into? And now when I'm doing it, I'm like, oh, this is actually much easier than I thought. So, so, you know, this, this, moment of of yeah i would say it's kind of joyful and i actually enjoy um making this item um and i can't wait for it to to look more like a finished object but right now it's just absolutely amazing and i'm still on my first skein of course and and yeah we'll i'll keep you guys posted when i start adding uh more parts to it but right now I'm going to do another I think it's like I need to do four more rounds of the same to maintain the the size and then I need an additional round to prepare where it's a slightly bit different here up at the edges um so right now I do make puff stitches but the last round which would be round 12 for the size um needs to be different and then I need to prepare for arms and body and when I get there, um, I'll give you guys a new update as to how this project is going. So I just finished the last row for um, the neckline and shoulder area. So now we are looking like this, the front and the back. And now I need to start preparing for um, the armholes um, and the rest of the body on this cardigan. So basically, this small cardigan, the next I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, go back here. Um, so like I constantly, every time I reach the other end, I turn the work and go back and forth. Um, and it's like single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, which makes this, this lovely texture that we spoke about earlier. Um, and now to prepare for the actual armholes uh, for the arms of this cardigan, um, once I reach this section where I made the um, puff stitches, I will here, um, instead of like continuing down this side, I will chain six and I will then add it to the opposite size to sort of start forming the armholes though with of course a chain of six here in between. Um, and, and yeah, then of course, that will be done on the other side as well, so that we, by that creating 
um, two armholes for this cardigan and then it's sorry basically just going back and forth back and forth um, and this lovely stitch pattern um, for another I think 34 rows or so and then you will have like the full body of the cardigan completed and then it's on to the arms afterwards and I'm still still on the uh, first skein here so so far it's it's working up really really nicely and I'm actually very pleased with um, with this texture and and with how it looks so far and it's been it's been really it's been really an, an easy and pleasurable um, project um, I will absolutely also make sure that I do share the pattern down in the description box down below if I haven't mentioned that yet so I now used almost the first ball of yarn um, and I only have like a little bit left which has resulted in me getting this far and I'm just gonna see if I can show it a bit differently like this you can actually see how the cardigan here is finally taking shape it's um it's looking a bit like a vest right now and I'm about on this body piece so what's extending down here from this body piece I'm about one third of the way um, of the total length and then of course that will eventually be rounded up and you will have to add sleeves um, long sleeves here on each of the sleeve side left and right and then I will have to finish up with uh, something here up front that will enable to of course uh, close this cardigan um personally i'll have to say that i've been really pleased to work with this eye yarn so far and i do really really love the texture of this stitch um which is basically a constant um what do you call it um so like you do single crochet double crochet single crochet double crochet and you keep alternating them which ends up in this beautiful texture and context pattern um i can't wait until this piece is done so far it feels really really soft just just in my hands even crocheted up it's it's really soft and light so um, it will be really a dream to wear for any child. Um, so yeah, I'm going to um, work the rest of this into the next round here. And then once I um, get there, I will change into the next ball of yarn. And uh, I will probably see you guys again around um, when it's time to start adding the sleeves because then we're going to talk a little bit about what how that's going to be happening but basically right now it's another 23 rounds or so or rows actually because i'm not crocheting in the row i'm crocheting the row it's another 23 rows here um until that i have finished the body part of this um cardio it's been a busy weekend, but I have managed to actually finish the rest of the body on this cardigan. So now we are at this position where you can see it has a full body length. And let's see if I can again sort of open it up like this. Beautiful, beautiful. And the stitch still keeps its very lovely definition. So the next step for me is to um, start adding sleeves and of course it doesn't really matter if I start adding the left or the right sleeve first um, and here I basically need to insert the yarn and um, and then basically once it's inserted chain one and then start to um, do the stitch pattern as it has been until now which would be um, single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet um, for a few rounds and then slowly I will have to start of course decreasing because else it's gonna be some 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 really big fluffy arms um, which is not 
called for in the pattern that I'm currently using. Um, I also need to work in the um, wrong side um, of the last round I made up here so that I do ensure that the stitch pattern definition keeps continuing based on that the shoulder will continue in the right pattern and so that we don't have um, um, a wrong repeat um, at the very start of it. So there's a few things I need to keep alert on when I start adding the sleeves. Um, I've read the pattern, I think two or three times now to ensure that I do make the right things. Um, I do fear that I will make a mistake. So far, I've only had to flock this whole piece once, which was one row. It was actually the second last row down here at, um, at the bottom, because I somewhere had made either two double crochets in a row or two single crochets. I don't remember anymore. I just know that um, when I came to the end of the row, um, the count wasn't right. Like I was ending with the wrong stitch. And I tried to figure out where I had done wrong and halfway through I still couldn't find it. So I decided to just flop the whole row and do it on new. And when I had done it again, it was fitting and matching. So somewhere in there I had made either two single crochets in a row or two double crochets, which is not equal this um, pillar-like stitch, um, which is which is the pattern of, of this. And as you can see here, it's it's still really, really gorgeous and it's going to be even more gorgeous when it does have the sleeves on. So um, I will start trying to add sleeves on this cardigan and you will get an update for me at least when I've added some sleeve on them to explain how easy I think that was going uh, compared to what's been described in the pattern. Um, and then, then we'll see where we go from here. Yeah. So I've finished the first seven rows of the first sleeve now, which makes it look a bit like, let's see, like this. Backside, you can see how the sleeve is slowly forming. I had to be extra careful and pay good attention when I was doing the very first round um, to ensure in this bottom area where we joined them with the six um, chains um, that, of course, um, that I pick the right um, stitches up for the actual um, sleeve. Um, but I do believe that succeeded reasonably well. Let's see if I can actually find it like this. You barely can see the seam here. Um, if you look really close, you might be able to see it, but from a distance, I am really, really pleased with the current result. Um, in the next round, I will make my first decrease and then I'll make it decreases every, I think, four, four rounds. Um, and now it's just about basically finishing up the sleeves, which is going to be quite a few rounds to go because it's a long sleeved cardigan. And, um, and yeah, I'm curious to see how the final result is going to be, of course. At least when a sleeve is added, it starts to look very close to being complete. I managed to finish the sleeve. Um, but of course that didn't go completely painless. Um, as since my last update, I realized that, um, I was actually slowly increasing the width of the sleeve, uh, because I somehow magically, um, also included the slip stitch into the round. And then for every round, I was basically increasing by one. So I had to unravel like eight done nine rounds, which kind of sucks. But anyhow, um, better realize um, the mistake sooner than later. And uh, yeah, so I unraveled it. And that also took a bit of a mess uh, because I had already sewn in some ends, which then kind of got entangled into some of the unraveling and blah, blah, blah. So what do I learn from this? Um, for some projects, um, it's actually better to wait, in, to wait with sewing in the ends. 
that's a detail. Anyhow, this is basically how we're looking now with the sleeve. And yeah, surprise, surprise, I do have an end that's not moving in. So yeah, this is actually starting to look like a real cardigan. It's kind of cool, I think. Um, I'm really, really pleased. You can also see that the sleeve here is slowly decreasing. Um, and, and yeah, I'm just now missing to add the second sleeve. I have written down um, the exact amount of stitches that I had for the rounds on the sleeve so that I can actually copy it here on the other side. Um, and, and that's about it, yeah, basically. So I have added a sleeve and I only missed to add the second sleeve and then I need to attach um, here at the top I need to attach the two straps so that you can tie a nice little um, bow tie and keep uh, this cardigan closed. Um, so yeah, that's about the next steps I'm gonna be progressing with is adding obviously the second sleeve and sew in the ends and show you guys um, the finished project. I have finally finished my Lemon Blooms cardigan which has turned out like this. The end goal is obviously a cardigan um, to fit approximately a kit size three to four years old, which might be the case. Obviously, I'm having a difficult time to relate to children's sizes, but I followed the pattern. Um, I used a bit more than three skeins. I used three skeins and a fifth. So this is what I have left off the last um, jean skeins I had. Um, I absolutely love it. It's um, still really, really soft after this is worked up. I, of course, made the final addition of adding these um, ties on top. So I was able to bow tie this one uh, together on top. And these has just simply been added on the, the inside. Um, and Basically, it's two straps of a bit more than a meter long, which I then um, just simply chained all the way through the end, pulled this uh, thread through and cut off the tiny bit extra yarn at the very end. And of course, I ensured that they were exactly long enough to make a nice bow tie uh, closure should one decide to actually um, close this card again. And that can, of course, be useful for, for smaller children. Um, there's not too much else to say except I'm really, really, really pleased with the result. It's a lot nicer than I had dared to hope for. Um, and the stitch is really like, this texture of the stitch is absolutely amazing. Um, I did a bit of research and my conclusion is that um, there are two names for this stitch. So I guess it kind of depends on where you are in the world or it depends on, um, I guess, um, who decided to, to go with the names. One of the names is the Lemon Peel Stitch. Um, the Lemon Peel Stitch is um, an alternating um, crochet stitch of single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, and then you do it reverse on the other row. And that's also the same stitch can also be referred to as up and down. So I don't know what you would call the stitch, I think Lemon Peel has a really nice ring to it than up and down, sounds a little bit more like plain. Um, so maybe the Lemon Peel stitch is the more fancy word for, for the stitch that I used for this whole cardigan. Um, what I have thought while I was making this was basically, I should consider maybe, and I do consider making a bigger version, like a human sized, human sized, duh, children are also human. Um, a size that actually might fit me um, as a cardigan uh, or as a bolero, short crop version maybe um, for basically colder winter months or um, chillier spring months or whatever. So I might actually try to adapt this pattern somehow to fetch a fully grown woman. Um, but I have plenty of other projects I need to do first, so that's not my priority right now. Um, what I have also done is, down in the description box here down below, I do have a link uh, to my Instagram where I have also posted um, a picture of this 
sweet, sweet, beautiful cardigan laid out on my table. And of course, at the end of this video, I will also have a picture showing it nicely laying there. Um, I hope you enjoyed this from start to the end video. Um, and if you have watched all the way until this time point and you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to give me comments as to what you think, but also if you have any suggestions or improvements for me, I'll happily hear them. And of course, um, if you haven't already, do subscribe to my videos. Um, ring the little bell to get notified whenever I post new videos. And thank you very much for your continued support. It really does mean a lot to me. And from here out, I will wish you a very happy day with lots of plenty of nice crocheting. Bye.